welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today, my friends. Hope you're all well. Um, it's not the most beautiful day outside. It's cloudy, it's rainy, it's continuing that autumnal water season. And so our practice today is, um, I was going to um, kind of continue with the autumn theme, and then I realized it's Samhain um, tomorrow, because it's Hallow's Eve. So I thought I'll draw upon the, um, my sister energy um, from my Irish family. Um, I very love my Irish family so much. Um, the real kinship, um, and my goddaughter is Irish. So I'm going to um, invite us to honor the festival of Samhain and talk a little bit of, about it during our practice. So we're going to be working with the element of fire, dear just Agni. And the element of fire is here at the core, the Manipur chakra. So we're gonna draw on fire. And the reason I'm gonna draw on fire is just my hair out, my ponytail. <laughs> I'll stop shaking my head. I'm not used to having long hair. I haven't had long hair since, I don't know, since I got married. And then the last time before that was when I was a child. So uh, it's a new experience for me having long hair. But back, back to the subject. So we'll, we're going to honour Samhain. And we'll be working with the element of fire. Because you'll know at this time of the year that lighting bonfires, lighting candles, is a way of recreating the fire of the sun when the nights when the nights fall um, nights are long and the, it falls dark very quickly. So we seek to create sunlight by lighting fires, by lighting candles, so that we have this connection with the warmth of the sun in this small way on this earth. Let's come into our sukhasa. And the mudra that I'm going to offer us is the Agni mudra. So let's turn the left palm face up, right parallel to the, so here's the navel, just a little bit above the navel. So below the diaphragm, between the diaphragm and the belly button is the solar plexus area. And this is where we're going to place our left palm face up. Curl in the fingers of the right hand, extend the thumb and place the right hand in the palm. That thumb, extended thumb, is the element of fire. It is the candle flame. Closing your eye. And begin to visualize at the very core of you, the flickering of a candle. And as you breathe in, allow this candle flame to shine brighter. As you breathe out, allow the warmth to begin emanating from the flame. So your breath is directing oxygen to this flame so that it burns more brightly. As you breathe out, you're allowing the heat to dissipate around the body. Our mantra for today is going to be Om Swaha. Om Swaha is the mantra for the solar plexus. So that we can ignite this fire and keep and fuel it with our practice so it keeps burning brightly through the cold, dark nights, the season of winter ahead. I often like to invite you to, you can see I have my Himalayan um, rock light. You can light a candle during your practice, especially through the next few months, so that you have the flickering warmth or light or fire represented 
in your home, during your sadhana, your practice. Om Swaha, inhaling Om, exhaling Swaha, silently with the breath as this candle flame burns more brightly, ever more brightly. One more breath. And then let's bring our hands together at the heart. Open by chanting Om three times. Inhale fully. Om. to your breast center. Namaste and welcome, welcome, welcome. So, I'm so excited. I love it when there's a festival. Um, and this really is the season of festivals. Um, so much to kind of this shift in seasons, the, the Samhain marks the end of summer, summer's end. It marks the end of the harvest season. So this is why we have the pumpkins and the turnips and all of the root vegetables. Um, and then it also marks the beginning of the darker half of the Gaelic calendar as we move towards winter. So it's a really potent time of the year in many different cultures. Um, and what uh, marks this connection between cultures is this earth connection, this wisdom, this intuitive wisdom we have about the cycles of nature and how we synchronize our communities with the way that nature's cycles naturally guide us. And so these wisdom traditions that are very close to earth nature. Um, help us to draw in to our essence in a way that we feel, and remember we've only been living in the modern world for a very short period of time, but for the vast, um, for the, the length of human civilization, we've been living with nature, in synchronicity with nature, harmonizing with nature. And so these pagan festivals, these sort of, wisdom traditions really draw us closer to our ancestral connections with the earth itself. Let's place our fingertips on the earth, lengthen the crown, lift the gaze, lift the heart, draw in the navel, so focus here on the solar plexus, the Manipur chakra. Take a full breath in. As you inhale, reach the arms up, bring the palms together. Create a human form of the candle, the flame. Lengthening up. As you exhale, let's hinge from the hips and fold forward down towards the earth. Reaching as far forward as you can with your hands, maintaining the connection between the palms. And if you feel comfortable, bend into your elbows and place the namaskar at the back of your head. If the earth needs to be lifted up towards you, use your bolster. I don't have my bolster handy, but you know, prop up the earth, lift the earth with a block, with a cushion, with a bolster. Inhale, release the hands along the earth, engage your core, so strengthen through the mid here to rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment here. Let's place the hands on the earth either side of you, turn to look over the left shoulder.
Inhale to center, turn to look over the right shoulder. Inhale to center. Take a moment again, let's reach up, bring the palms together, fold down towards the earth. Extend the arms long. Remember, if you're not making a connection with the earth, rise, lift the earth up towards you, place a bolster there. Hello. Bend into your elbows and place the hands at the back of the crown. Again, lift the elbows by rising, by raising the earth towards you. Extend the arms, engage the core, rise up. Exhale, hands, look over the left shoulder. Inhale forward, exhale right. Back to center one more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hinge from the hips to fall forward down towards the earth. Bend into your elbows, hands at the back of the head. We extend the arms, engage the core, rise up. Exhale, hands, look over the left, look center, look right. We're gazing all around to, to um, be mindful of the spirit world, the other world all around us. He said that so when um, the boundaries between this earth, this world and the other world are become transparent. And so transmigration of the spirits happens. Hence why all of the dressing up into ghouls and ghosts of children, the sort of mimicry of the spirit world. Take a moment here, my friends. Let's bring the Agni Mudra back to the core. That candle burning brightly. On Hallow's Eve, or, or as we approach Samhain, Samhain runs from sunset on the 31st to sunset of the 1st, the Celtic day doesn't run from sunrise, but from sunset. Light a candle and place it in the window. Place some fruit and apples, making offerings to the ancestors, the kinfolk who may choose to visit. Welcome them with love and hospitality and warmth. Thinking of those who have passed, connecting with them, offering them safe passage. And in turn, they watch over you through the season of what can be hardship during winter. Om Swaha. Om Swaha, Om Swaha. Candle burning brightly. Bonfires roaring loudly. Coming together with family, with friends. knowing that a village is necessary for us to survive times of hardship. Release your Agni Mudra. Let's remove our blocks. Come directly onto the earth on all fours. Place the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Draw in the navel. Lengthen the spine. Draw the crown. Long, draw the tailbone long so that you're creating this extension from crown to root. Inhale, lift the tailbone, dip the low back, shine the heart, lift the gaze, cycle through cat cow, majriyasan, pikliyasan, flowing through the spine. 
Chakravakasana, this wheel from cat to calf. And then, my friends, tuck your toes. Inhale, lift the knees, hover here for a moment, then melt your tailbone back. Walk the feet so that you begin to create a little bit of sway in the hips. Ears between your armpits. Turn the inside of your elbows so they point forward. Soft bend in your knees or a deep bend in your knees. Your choice, my friends. Take one full breath here. Then look to the top of the mat and walk to the top of your mat, coming into a forward fold here. Soften the shoulders. Let's bring your palms together and take your hands to the back of the crown. Namaskar. As you inhale, bend into your knees, rise up, maintain the hands at the back of the head, open out the elbows here. So if you see here, open out the elbows, hands together at the back, the top of your mat. I'll turn so you can face, so you can see me. Lift the gaze up towards the sky. Open the wings of your elbows. Reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Ardha Surya Namaskar. Hands on the earth. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on shins or thighs or the earth. Exhale, fold. Bend into your knees. Take your hands to the back of the Namaskar at the back of the head. Inhale, bending into your knees. Open out your arms, in elbows, engage the core. Lift your gaze up. Then release your hands to the crown, to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. So a little variation on our Surya Namaskar. Inhale, halfway. Hands can be on thighs, shins, all the earth. Bend into your knees, hands to the back of your skull. Open out the elbows, engage your core, rise up. Lift the gaze, open out the elbows. Lift the gaze. Reach your hands up towards the sky. Exhale, fold down for the last time. Inhale, halfway. Bend into your knees, take your hands to the back. Namaskar at the back of the head. Inhale, engage your core to rise up. Lift your gaze, open out the elbows and reach the hands up. Exhale to the heart. So you can see how that opens the front of the body. And when we lift our hands, we have our side of the body fully extended and open here. Hands at the heart. Take a moment here. Moving into... Full sun salutation. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold down. Step the right leg long, bring the right knee to the earth. And tuck the toes here. Keep the fingers on the earth. And open out the heart. So place blocks here if you wish to place blocks here by bringing up the earth towards you. You can have your blocks at any height. So you can see when you use blocks, it gives you much more space using a footstool. If you have a sofa there, you can place your hands on the edge of the sofa or furniture. Breathe into the hips, engage your core, lift your gaze. Now let's bring our hands to the abdomen, coming into our Agni Mudra. Left palm up, right hand, fingers folded, thumb extended. Reflect on the harvest, the harvest of riches, friendships, family, work personal successes and achievements, 
moments of joy and happiness. And hold on to these memories, these feelings, to see you through times of hardship or loss with the season ahead. Remember that joy of summer, laughter with friends. And know that when you light a candle or light a fire, that sense of collective, that sense of community, that sense of belonging returns to you. Release your hands. Let's melt the sit bones back. Extend that left leg long. Flex the foot. Hands can be on the earth here or continue to use your blocks. Ardha Anumanasana. Flex that foot, that left foot. Roll through the foot. Let's move the blocks. Tuck the right toe, lift the right knee, step back long, body parallel. Hold here for a moment or bring your knees immediately to the earth. And when everybody's ready, let's all bring our knees to the earth. Exhale, bend into your elbows. Lift your tailbone and melt your heart and chin to the earth in Ashtangasana. Slide the knees away. Bring the hands closer to the shoulders. Tuck in the elbows, pressing into your big toes. Rise up in cobra. Bhujangasana. Through table into mountain. Parvatasana. So just as we step back with the right foot, we're going to step forward with the right foot. So let's bring that left knee to the earth and then step the right foot forward. And again, hands on earth, lift the crown, lift the heart. Now, if you wish to use blocks, make use of your blocks here. Remember, you can have them in any height. And rise up here. Sink into that right hip. So we're staying in this low variation on Janyasana or Chetakasana, sorry, equestrian pose. As if you're riding a horse, that's what it, equestrian pose is. Find your connection with the core here. So keep that awareness of the core here. Connecting with this sense of heat, fire, warmth, invitation, welcome. Often we see the light over a door. We still, many of us still have a light over the door. We often think it's for safety, but actually what it is for, it's a sign of welcome. That here is a home, a family home that welcomes all who are in trouble or who need help. This is intuitive to have a light above the front door of our homes. Inhale, rise up, bring your hands into Atni Mudra, left palm with the right hand folded and thumb extended. What does it mean for you to be welcomed? What does it mean to you to receive hospitality? What it, does it mean to you to turn to a friend who opens their door and welcomes you with an embrace? Knowing that this support, this welcome is available to you during the hardest times, the darkest nights. Exhale, release your hands, tuck your left toe, lift your left knee, and let's step forward with the left foot to come into a forward fold, my friends. This time, bring the hands to the heart in the muscular, bend into your knees and rise up into Utkatasana chair pose. So deep bend in the knees, tailbone reaching back, engage the core. 
check that your weight is distributed in the four corners of your feet. And but to do this, you can lift the toes and still feel balanced. If you're gripping the earth with your toes, then you're pushing the weight forward. So lift the toes just to evenly distribute the weight. Hands at the heart in Namaskar. Take a moment here. Exhale, look over to the left. Option to hook the right elbow over the left knee and then press the left palm onto the right palm. Coming into Parivritta Utkatasana. Inhale to center. Let's look over to the right. Again, hook the left elbow over the right knee if you wish. Right palm pressing into left. You can certainly feel the burn in the thighs here. Inhale to center. Rise up as a candle of vessel. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment here. Let's repeat this on the other side. Inhale, hands reach up. Exhale, fall down towards the earth. Let's step back long with the left leg this time. Untuck the toes and bring that left knee to the earth. Pad the knees if you wish, my friends. And then let's sink into this right hip here, coming into Chetakasana. And again, use blocks, lift the earth up towards you, open the heart, lift the gaze. Om Swaha. Om Swaha is this the place that Ombu is the earth, Ombuva is the, the waters, and Om Swaha is the place that's above before we move into the upper chakra. So from here, the Manipur, before we move into the plane of the heart, you can see that we're already rising up from the earth, moving towards this other world, to the, towards the spiritual world. Inhale, bring your hands into Akani Mutra, my friends, and connect here with a sense of what it means for you to offer hospitality. How generous are you? in offering welcome support. Uh, as the lighting of the bonfires during this time of the year is so that they are protective and cleansing qualities from both the fire itself, the smoke, the ashes. And so how can we offer protection to others? How can we offer safety to others? One more breath here. Exhale, hands to the earth. Tuck the left toes, lift the left knees, and step back long. Body parallel, halakasana. Stay here or lower the knees immediately. Engage the core. When you're ready, my friends, let exhale knees. And top toes, bend into elbows, chest and chin to the earth, tailbone lifted, Ashtanasana. Slide the knees away, rise up in Bhujangasana. Move straight down into Parvatasana. One breath more. And because we stepped, back with the left leg first. We're now gonna step forward with the left leg. Bring the right knee down, and step forward with the left. Sink into the hips here. Hands on the earth, Chittakasana. Lift the heart, lift the gaze. Remember, we all had different length arms. The sound working. 
let's um, sink into that left hip. When you're ready, my friends, rise up. Agni Mutra. So one of the reasons why we have, we see pumpkins carved and placed the front of the doors, front of people's homes, is to traditionally has become to be known as a way of frightening off the spirits or the ghosts and the ghouls and so on. That is much more of a modern um, take on it. It is actually the spirits that visit our homes or the spirits that are beloved by us or the kinfolk that are beloved by us. Exhale, hands to the earth, untuck the right toes and step forward with the right foot to meet the left. You know where we're going. Utkatasana, fierce pose. Bend into your knees, bring your hands together at the heart. Let's go over to the right first. So hook the left elbow over the right knee. Press the right palm onto the left palm, turn your gaze. Sit low here. So you could have your elbow hooked or you can have it slightly lifted, my friends. Inhale to center. Let's exhale over to the left, hook the right elbow over the left knee. Press the left palm into the right palm. Inhale, center, rise up tall. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment here. Regather the breath. Inhale, hands to the sky. Gentle. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, hands to the sky. Gentle back bend. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more time. Inhale, hands to the sky. Gentle back bend, hands to the heart. Let's step back along with the right leg. Let's come onto the ball of that foot, actually. So on the right, we'll do a high lunge here. Janyasana. Take a moment here. Reach up with your hands, palms together, and then hook the hands at the back of the skull. And open out, out the heart, open out the elbows, lift the gaze here. If the high lunge feels very challenging, you can bring that right knee to the earth and do a low lunge instead, my friends. One more breath here. Exhale, right hand to the earth, reach up with the left arm. And let's bring the thumb to the knuckle of the ring finger. This is Surya Mudra, the sun seal. And remember, you can have your knee on the earth here too, my friend. Exhale, bring the left hand to the earth. Take a moment here, and then let's step forward with the right foot to meet the left. Forward fold, hands to the heart, bend into your knees, rise up in Utkatasana, chair pose, hands in Namaskar here. Reach up, gentle belt bend. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment here. And again, let's do this twice more. Inhale, hands to the sky, gentle back bend. So our back bends are all going to look very different. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more time. Inhale to the sky. Exhale to the heart. And now we're going to step back with that left leg. And again, let's stay on the ball of that left foot. Bend into the right knee. High lunge here. And Janyasana. Inhale, hands up. And then bring the hands to the back of the head. Open out the elbows, lift the gaze, open the heart. You can bring that left knee to the earth if you wish, my friends.
One more breath here, wherever you are. Let's release the left hand to the earth and reach up with the right arm to the sky, fold in the ring finger, thumb to the knuckle of the ring finger. Surya Mudra, the sun seal Mudra. Again, working on this sort of welcoming of the light, drawing upon the light. So Sawin is that liminal space, that threshold between the here, between the present and the past, that liminal threshold between this earthly world and the spiritual world. Exhale, right hand to the earth. Let's bring that left foot to meet the right foot. Take a moment here, bend into your knees, rise up in Uttakatasana, fierce pose. Reach up, gentle back bend. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment here. Release the hands, let's bring them to the side, bring the ring finger to the base of the thumb and thumb to the ring finger knuckle. Surya Mudra, the sun seal gesture. Open the heart. Inhale, hands to the sky. Exhale, let's fold down towards the earth. Take a moment. Relax the shoulder, the neck. So we're sort of hanging out here in Uttanasana with the back bends, a series of back bends we've done. This will help to release the lower back. Have a bend in your knees, a soft or deep bend. If you wish, you can wrap your arms around your legs. This will also release the upper back. I creating space between the shoulder blades. Release your hands. And then let's step back along with the left leg and turn onto the sole of that foot. Keep the hands on the earth here. Rise up. In warrior one. So right toes are pointing forward, that right knee is bent. You might want to sink a little bit deeper into this right thigh. Extend out through that left leg. Bring your hands in Agni Mudra at the solar plex. So square your hips here. So create more space if you need to turn the hips forward. You need a little bit more space for that. Inhale, hands to sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, hands to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more time. Inhale, hands to the sky. Exhale to the heart. And now open up into warrior two, Virabhadrasana. Bring your hands into the sun seal, Surya Mudra. Bring that left hand to the left leg and reach up and over with the right arm, Vipariti. Virabhadrasan, Shanti warrior. Exhale back into the great warrior. Turn the right toes forward. And then let's turn the left toes up. Bend into that left knee and then shift that right foot into a 45 degree angle. So we come into warrior one on the left side. So take your stance as wide as you need so that you can square the hips forward. Hands in Agni Mudra here. Inhale, hands to sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Hands to sky. To the heart. To the sky. To the heart. Open out in Warrior Two. Mahavira with Surya Mudra. Release the right hand to the right leg and up and over, Ashanti warrior. 
Open the body D, warrior. Open out, warrior two. And straighten through the legs. Take a moment here. Bring the hands together. Coming to Agni Mudra here. Heel toe ever so slightly. So you can bend into your knees, turn your toes out. And come into Utkata Kanasana, Goddess Pose. Send through the right leg, flex that foot. So shift the weight over into the left side. Back to center. Let's go over to the right side and extend that left leg, flex the foot. If you wish, you can widen your stance. So we come into Skandasana variation here. Let's go to both sides. So moving from side to side, stepping from one world into the other, from the other world into the present material world. This transmigration without fear, with courage. And then back to center, you may want to heel toe in if you took your legs a little bit wider and open out the arms. Spread out the fingers wide. Exhale, hands to the earth. Heel toe, heel toe here. And then come into Malasana squat pose for a moment. Again, you can bring your hands into Agni Mudra here or Namaskar, whatever feels more comfortable for you, my friends. And remember, you can sit directly on the earth or sit on a bolster or blocks. Won't be here for long. And then let's release to the earth. Place your hands on either side of you and then swim the knees one way then the other way, just to loosen out here. We're gonna move into fire log pose. So fire log pose, remember we practiced this um, a little while ago, and you might need a cushion or some, some folded blanket or some blocks. So let's take the left leg and hold the foot Let's swing the left leg around a few times. This is fire log pose. So we're going to create fire log pose. And then bring that right, that left ankle onto the right knee. And that right shin is parallel to the edge of your mat. Now you'll see that there's a big gap for me and there may well be a big gap for you. You can support that gap by placing some blocks underneath it. Ideally, you want to play something a bit softer, like a cushion or a foldy blanket or a pillow. If you don't have anything available and you're quite happy to have this space here, then keep the space there. When you look down, you should be able to see a triangle. So you remember how we build our bonfires, how we build our fires. We make a triangle with the, the sticks and the kindling so that the flame can rise. Flex this right left foot, my friends, and flex the right foot. You should be able to feel this in your hips. And rest your left hand on the inside of that left knee. We're all going to be in different places here. I have been, um, because of the rowing that I do, I have very tight hips. So our bodies are going to be different for different reasons. But like, yeah, when you do yoga, Kali, shouldn't you have more flexible hips? It's not how it works, my friends. This is really flexible for rows. <laughs> and also for me at my age. So it's, we can't compare ourselves to anyone else. What our body does and how it does it is so unique to our, our physiology, our anatomy our practices. 
one more breath here in fire log and then let's release this left knee let's like swing it around again little gentle cradle rock of this leg and then let's release this leg to the earth and let's take the right leg and again let's give this a little cradle rock holding this right leg And then when you're ready, place it on the left knee. And you might find there's a difference between the two sides and that's not surprising. Again, you may want to place some support there underneath that right knee. Or you may choose not to have anything there and that's fine as well. Again, look down, check that you have a triangle there. Flex the feet. Rest that right hand on the inside of that right knee very gently. Just so you'll notice that just that little bit of extra weight will create just that tiny little bit of small space for you in that hip. You are going to feel it on the hip creases. On Swaha. As we see the seasons transform from summer to winter. Fire is the transformative element. The commonality of this understanding through cultures around the world reminds us that our ancestors have long held this knowledge and wisdom. whether they're Indian like mine or, I, or Celtic. And many other cultures too, not to exclude any culture, but to welcome all at the heart of whom we have this traditional knowledge. And sometimes sadly, Organized religion has appropriated different wisdom practices. And so that our connection perhaps is lost or faded. One more breath here in fire log. And let's lift this right knee and cradle it like a baby and rock it from side to side. My friends, let's release the legs. Let's remove these blocks out of the way. Let's swing the legs from one side to the other side. You can really feel this in that lower body here. Let's extend the legs long, coming into Dandasana. Lengthen the crown. Lengthen the heart. Engage the core, we're going to hinge forward in Paschimottanasana, forward fold. So bring your hands together in Namaskar at the heart and reach up above the crown. As you exhale, let's hinge from the hips to reach forward. And then you can release your hands. Melt your heart down. So we're all going to be in different places here. Keep the feet flexed so you feel this along the length of your legs. One more breath, engage the core and rise up with Namaskar above the crown. Exhale, take your hands above your head for a moment and lift your gaze up towards the sky. Bend into your knees. Let's hold here. Now you can come onto your toes. You can lift one leg, you can lift both legs. Variation of Nukasana, boat pose. We'll leave your toes on the earth, my friends. Engage your core here. Perhaps you lift one leg at a time. And 
watching the first legs. And then when you're ready, let's hug everything in. And then let's come down to the earth. Oh. Let's create a candle flame on the earth here. So extend, you're going to need some space over here. I can put my feet in my dog's bed. Oh, yeah, he doesn't like that. He's like, what are your feet doing in my bed? Now reach over here with Namaskar. Feel the extension along the sides of the body. Hands gently together. If this feels um, uncomfortable in your lower back, bend into your knees, my friends. And so roll the back so that the smaller the back is resting on the earth, and that will help your lower back to feel a little more supported. Releasing your hands, and really bring your knees, and into your knees, bring your feet to the earth. Hug in the knees, give them a little hug, roll on the lower back from side to side. And we're gonna move into a lying down twist here, my friends. So for your lying down twist, you can keep your knees together, or you can extend this left leg long, and then roll onto the left hip. So your options are gonna be both knees together or the left leg long, and then place that left hand on the right. Your right arm can be in a cactus shape on the earth or reaching overhead, whatever feels most suitable for you here, darlings. So you can feel the deep twist here at the Manipur Chakra. The heart is open, welcoming, inviting, offering sustenance and support. Inhale, center. Let's hug in the knees. And then again, we're going to roll over to the right side. So you're off your opportunity, your choice is to go with both knees or to send the right leg long and then take the left knee over, rolling onto your right hip. And this left arm can be in cactus on the earth or you can reach overhead with it. Your right hand is supporting that left knee. Three breaths here. And your sutta, that's in the reclined twist. And when you're ready, my friends, inhale, legs to center, hugging them in. A gentle roll on your lower back from side to side. And then extend your legs long to come into Shavasana. Cover yourself with a blanket. Cover your eyes with an eye pillow or a scarf. Let's settle here for the next couple of minutes. In our Shavasana, corpse pose. Yoga practice is a practice in which it is an opportunity to be reborn, to reset. So the corpse pose is symbolic of that rising anew, 
from your practice. Arising after having discharged and cleansed stagnant or negative energy, having awakened and activated energy that serves you. Softening your arms and hands, fingers. Softening your legs, feet and toes. Softening your neck, shoulders, head. Softening your jaw, cheekbones, forehead. Feel the essence of warm glow surrounding you. This feeling of coziness of being curled up, being safe under a blanket in your home. In the place that you feel that is home, is coming home to the self. Our ancestors, our kinfolk, our loved ones, Visit us when they are most needed for guidance, for wisdom. Far away in this liminal space. Is a homecoming. It's a remembrance, an opportunity for reconnection. Three more breaths here, my friends. Visualize a warm orange glow in your mind's eye, at the third eye, the Agni Chakra, see a candle burning brightly. as it illuminates all that is joyous, loving, nourishing in your life, in your world, in your relations. Take a full breath in and open out your arms, spreading them wide, stretching out through the legs, Yawning as if you are awakening. Hug everything in. And roll over onto your left side. When you are ready, let's rise up. Into Sakasan. Keep your eyes closed for the moment. And then rub your palms together briskly. To create fire. Rolling this fire stick, generating warmth, heat. And then when your palms are roasty, place your palms over your eyes. Open your eyes into the darkness. Allow the glimmers of light to shine through. And then draw your hands down your face, parting your fingers, opening them. And reconnecting with your space, wherever you are, gaze around your home, take everything in. Be grateful for all that you have and all that you can offer to others. 
full breath in, full breath out through open mouth. Let's close by chanting Om Shanti three times. Inhale fully. Om Shanti 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 With great love and blessings to you all. Danyavad. Love to my Gaelic family. Thank you.